Hi, and welcome to another edition of What's in the Bag, Final Five Edition. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Eliza Pancakes, and today, ooh, monsieur, ooh, mon ami, it's a very special edition. Au français. Actually, it's in English. We, we don't have the budget to dub it or sub it. It's, it's in English. Sorry. C'est bon de toi voir et fin ici. Vous n'étiez pas un, pardon, même si vous n'avez pas gagné. You speak French? Are you fluent? No, absolutely not. That was just a one-time thing. Palm, I'm so glad to see you. I feel like you have had one of the strongest character arcs this whole series. Well, maybe we'll just say this whole season. I, I like the whole entirety of the top five. You guys are just phenomenal. And if we include Dakota in there, that's the strongest top six that I have seen in a long time. Like probably since season two season one season two season three is all over the fucking place let's be honest so um how do you feel about your journey on drag race so far now that it's over i feel like the journey has definitely come to an end even though it lasted for several weeks it feels like it was over in an instant i was not able to bring home the crown but i made the finale and that is a win in my book oh yeah yeah of course palm of course but before we get to sentimental, Palm, please open that designer bag up and shake whatever's in it out to the floor. Because now it's time to take the deep dive. It's time to see what's in the bag. These three dresses that you brought for us today are gorgeous. I don't have any other word to describe them other than gorgeous. I love, I love all of them. Your first dress here, your entrance look, the middle dress here, I believe that was on the, what was that look? The Divas look, the uh, silver screen starlets look. Yeah, your Marilyn Monroe inspired look. And then the third one was what you wore for the finale, of course, that you didn't win. But let's face it, Plum, I think that we're all in agreement that you're the fashion queen of this season. And I'm not just kissing your ass, I'm not blowing smoke up your up there. <laughs> I mean, Morgan was in agreement, the other judges were in agreement. Um, the new twink judge seemed to really like your looks this whole season, and as did I. And I feel like you and Dahlia Swan were just like neck and neck, this, this close, this close. Uh, how do you feel about that, Palm? Dahlia was good competition, at least in regards to her fashion. When she first entered the workroom I wasn't totally impressed, but her future queen of the world look changed my opinion. I am happy to be crowned fashion queen of season 4, even though it means that I did not win the actual crown. So, how do you feel about Zoar and Abacus? I know that, like, Abacus won, but how do you feel about, like, them as competition? Do you feel like... Maybe you're a robbed queen, or do you feel like the right call was made, or do you feel like they had strengths where you didn't? Because Zora didn't win either, but like a lot of people were saying that she's also equally a fashion queen, even though I don't recall her getting any runaway wins. I think she had good looks, but she just was better in the challenges, I think. Zoara and Abacus were great competition. They understood the assignment and received high praise most of the time. Obviously Abacus more so because she actually won. I don't see myself as a robbed queen, I think that in the moment you have many many options to choose from, and yet only one choice to make. I feel like in any other reality, any one of us could be crowned magical queen. So basically what you're saying, Pom, is that in some other alternate dimension, I was crowned Magical Queen and now hosting the show, the real show, while Morgan has to host the shitty after show. <laughs> All right, let's get back to these other dresses. I really, really, really adore your entrance look. And I haven't really given very many props 
as the kids say, about entrance looks because it's kind of one and done. It's not really the big focus of the episode too much. It's more so what you wear for the challenge, the runway, blah, 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 blah. I liked it. I thought it was exotic, mysterious, sexy, demure, like a, a vintage lady from like 1940s, like pulp uh, detective serials, whatever those are called. I love this look. I want to steal it, of course. It probably won't fit because, you know, my breasts are too big. <laughs> and the middle look here, your Marilyn Monroe inspired look. I love this look. This is quite possibly my favorite look that you've worn all season. Of course, I wore a similar look for the show a few episodes ago. And, of course, the person I was interviewing completely did not get the reference at all. <laughs> Isn't that funny? They didn't get the reference at all to me wearing an amazing look. Speaking of homages, I can see that you are wearing a version of my promotional look, no? Yes, it must be a knockoff. It looks far too cheap to be a Champs Les Sims original. It wasn't that cheap. God, it was cost me $35, which I had to take out a loan at the bank and put it on layaway. It wasn't that cheap for me, okay? Now let's talk about this other dress, this final dress that you wore for the finale. This is what your your coronation look, the, the regal royal regalia, I think, was the runway theme. And I like this dress. It, it kind of mirrors, it harkens back to Dahlia's future queen of the world look and it, I'm assuming by the same designer because you're a very stylish fashionable queen Pom and you would only be caught alive or dead in the best and I really like this look it says goddess it says winner it says royalty of course you you actually didn't win you know you lost to an old man in a dress <laughs> a bearded queen <laughs> how does that make you feel Pom <laughs> at the end of the day well, Eliza, at the end of the day, I still have my youth, my good looks, and my marketability on the drag scene. I also have designers beating down my door to have me model their designer clothes for them, rendering my need to go to Walmart null and void. Can you say the same? Are those crow's feet and saddlebags getting you booked and blessed these days? Oh, okay. First of all, smartass. <laughs> I didn't shop at Walmart, okay? <laughs> I got it from... Etsy, okay? I think they were based out of Hong Kong or somewhere. I would never go to Walmart, ever, even for those those jewelry th that are very cheap and kind of convincing looking. <laughs> never, ever, ever would never do that. Oh, I see. You're more of an express type of girl, no? Most regular salons do not have such expansive plus-size departments. Uh, you always wear a kidder, Steve. <laughs> oh, look at that. We're running out of time. So I'm going to go ahead and close out the show. Tune in next time when I team up with Mary Kay Letourneau and Carla Homolka as we take a hands-on, all-inclusive, all-hands-on-deck approach to internet child safety against predators and groomers. Watch out, creeps. We're coming for you. <laughs>